The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. <clears throat> okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, I'm going to start the show just a little bit differently today for several different reasons. Uh, first, I would like to bring out the chart of the corn. As you can see here, uh, we bought the corn, uh, pretty what I thought was a pretty good spot. And I put a stop a little too close, I guess. Went down, took out the stop, and rallied 50 cents. You can, well, 48 cents. We stopped exactly at the 382 of the last rally high that we made back in here, folks. So these numbers are still working pretty good. Now I'm going to switch gears here just a little bit. Yesterday on the show, the phone rang, and I answered it because it was Byron Tucker. He would never call me unless it was something really important. And he was coming back from Africa where he's doing some, some type of business with those folks over there. And uh, – he, basically, what had happened was his wife, Liz, uh, they have a home in Connecticut. Well, they got several homes. Anyway, their home in Connecticut was uh, uh, Liz was up there uh, doing some, uh, I don't know exactly what she was doing, but anyway, she slipped on the deck and she fell uh, off the deck and she broke both of her legs. So she was really in uh, pretty bad shape. So that's what happened there. So just to give you a little 10-4. Now we're going to change the subject a little bit because one of the reasons why I had talked to Byron earlier in the day was to remind us of what happened to him uh, back in the uh, early 80s. Uh, Byron ran the Goldman Sachs uh, desk uh, for Goldman Sachs on the CME for uh, foreign exchange and T-bills. Uh, S&P wasn't even trading yet. That wasn't until uh, April of that year. But uh, he basically ran the, the deck for Delsher Commodities, which was Leo Malamud who started the Merck. And uh, he worked for Mal uh, Leo full-time, and they're still very dear friends. Leo's 90 now. But uh, some friends, some friends, some contacts that Leo had had come in from Japan to banking context that Leo that Leo wanted to uh, get interested in for hedging uh, T bills and uh, Jenny Mays and the foreign currencies and stuff and he had been working on them for several days and hadn't had very much success and so he t asked Byron he said Byron he said all these guys want to do is talk about baseball. And he said, can you take him to the Cub game? And, and you know, <laughs> Byron knows much about baseball as I do about commodities. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he said, sure, I'll take him up there. And so he asked me to go, and it was, it was a day game, and I had something to do with the Merck that day. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, I just couldn't get out of it. And so he had to go himself. And so he goes to the game at Wrigley Field. First of all, it's the end of May, it's the end of April, right after the season began, and the uh, it's raining, you know, it's drizzling off and on, and the the Cubs are losing. Uh, this is a I, you won't believe it. They were losing nine to one in the bottom of the ninth inning, and these Japanese guys will not leave. They're keeping score with their little scorecards. That, you know, there's only about eight thousand people. Uh, in Wrigley Field left at that day uh, out of a, you know, its capacity is like 48,000. So there's nobody there. The weather is horrible. The game is like four hours long, and it's in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the Cubs are losing 9-1. to one. Believe it or not, folks, the Cubs came back and tied the score in the bottom of the ninth inning, and it went into 13 innings, and the Cubs won the game. I think the final score, I don't remember exactly, but it was two runs. They run it anyway. Byron was he's he was so he had a cold. They they went out to dinner and then he came in in the morning and he had, he had a cold and he was he he was really he said oh he says I'll never forgive Leo for doing this to me and I said oh Byron I said the most exciting games ever at Wrigley Field he says but he doesn't like baseball when my kids used to play uh, Trivial Pursuit he couldn't say who Mickey Mantle played for for heaven's sakes so anyway in the morning Leo comes in the next morning. And he grabs Byron and hugs him and gives him a big kiss on the cheek. He says, I don't know what you did, Byron. He said, I've never seen three people more excited to sign a contract. 
And <laughs> this is, shows you sometimes baseball makes more difference than anything else that's going out. It turned out to be one of Leo's best clients, uh, and they're still there from what Byron told me. Uh, anyway, it was a very good story to look at. All right, uh, we've got uh, a guest today. Hopefully, it's going to be uh, Stan Harley. I haven't had verification yet, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to get him uh, working right now. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, first of all, I want to share a really great charts here from our good friend Steve Rhodes. And uh, let's get stick up here so we can take a look at these are euro charts because this is where you got to follow the money, as Bernstein and Woodward said. This is a long term right here. Notice you can see the beautiful look at the beautiful A, B, C, D pattern up at the top here, folks. You know, blind man can see that. Look at the nice little three drive pattern right in here. There's your retracement right here. Right here, folks, is where my grandson was born. We were trading at par in the uh, U.S. dollar, or excuse me, in the uh, euro at that time. The dollar was 160, and the cougar, uh, cougarans and maple leaves were selling for about 250, including the commission. So, I started buying some coins for my grandson during those years. Uh, up until it was about 500 bucks, I'd try to buy one or two a month. But uh, he's kept. He's, he still has them all. But anyway, uh, you can see here that we're still heading lower right here. This is the area that we're watching very, very closely. So I want to bring this up to your attention here to see where we are uh, with this euro. These are really, really neat charts. So I, I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. This next one is, is really important because it illustrates what we've been showing you over the last uh, weeks and months here uh, on the euro because we think we're headed towards par, you can see uh, what Steve's looking at here is this completion of this pattern right near par, as near as near as we can tell. Now I know with that black background, sometimes it's hard to see and stuff. But what I've done is I've tried to duplicate that pattern and bring it up so you can see it uh, in a, with a white white background. What makes it just a little bit easier to see. We'll get this up here, and you'll be able to see it right here. And there we go. And you'll see there's where we are right in here. That's going to be setting right at the 78% level. That is par, folks, 100 zero, zero, uh, to the uh, U.S. dollar to the uh, euro. So going to be very, very important because, the, you know, the dollar is strong, i.e. gold is weak. Last night we had a 382 retracement up there at uh, 1746. The high was 1747. We dropped about $10. From that, so that the, the, the swings are tightening up just a little bit, but they're still heading lower. I believe that once we get below 1700, which is not far away, we're going to see a really rapid acceleration from 1700 down to 1600. Because I think 1700 is where I hear from the internet gurus that that's the line in the sand. Well, that line in the sand for me was 1860, 1765, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, we're going to have a, a tiny break here to pay for some bills here for TFNN. And then we've got a couple more things to cover. And then hopefully we're going to have Stan Harley. Stay tuned, boys and girls, because you're going to hear something you've never heard here in the 15 years I've been doing this show. We're going to have a come to Jesus moment, boys and girls. Get your Bibles out. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect the hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We're talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, folks, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this chart we're looking at. This is a crude oil chart. You'll notice the, uh, the prices are above here. The open interest is what's below here. You can see the open interest has been dropping dramatically. And you can see here, this is the prices have been dropping dramatically. We already talked about that $12,000 drop in the crude oil yesterday that was missed by someone who's raising their hand now. Anyway, uh, Billy, Billy V down there in Texas sends these to me every day on the major ones that we follow. And when we're seeing something like this, it's very important for two reasons. You can see here we're having a huge drop in open interest as, as prices are dropping, okay? If you look at this little diagram up here, you see if open interest is dropping and price are dropping, that means that the market is strengthening. And those are the, just the formulas for open interest, folks. I have no, no control over what that means or anything. But when you have an open interest dropping, okay, and price is dropping, the market is actually strengthening. It's not weakening. Now, if open interest had been rising, okay, and price is dropping, the market is weakening badly because you've got many shorts coming into the market. But here you've got the shorts are leaving the market. You know, so that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, longs are too, but that's one of the reasons why this thing had a bullish implication. What was so frustrating to me, folks, if you just look at this chart and you say, gee, there may be an ABCD pattern forming here. Well, yesterday, folks, was a sad day for me because I had to go for uh, services, funeral services uh, for my very dear friend who was my doctor, Dr. Uh, Dr. B here in Tucson. And uh, he died unexpectedly of a massive stroke. Uh, he was sitting on the side of the bed in the morning, and he said to his wife, I don't feel so good. And good was his last word. He died instantaneously. He had just a massive brain hemorrhage, which caught, was what took my, my mother's life, too. But he passed away. And so anyway, I get back, and I'm looking at these charts. And I, what, the, the most frustrating thing to me, folks, I want you to see something right here. This is the chart. Hold on, I'm just going to get you, and I do this every single day. I do these because my three main things that I love to trade more than anything else are crude oil, gold, and, of course, the the stock indices. Uh-oh, something's not right. Oh, dear, we got trouble in River City. Sorry, boys and girls. Give me a second here. i got to get this up here again to see why it won't work. There we go. We'll get up here. 
All right, there is a four hour chart. You can see the perfect ABC down here. This is a four hour chart, okay? Now, I, I did, you know, to be very frank with, I didn't look at this clearly, and I, I didn't look at this until this morning after the bottom was already in. I, I didn't look at it till that time. But one, the one that was the most amazing to me, and I've been teaching this stuff to you folks here for 15 years here, and I get charts from you guys all the time looking at different patterns. And folks, <laughs> I didn't get nothing. And I'm not blaming anybody. There's lots of excuses, but no reasons. Let me tell you something. Look at this pattern here that we're looking at here. Now, this is a daily chart of the crude oil. Get this up here. This is a daily. Look at the perfect ABCD. It's just like the one on the 4R. It went exactly to the price, folks, 95.20. The low was 95.17. And uh, <laughs> it's rallied uh, $8,000 in a few hours. I missed that one, too. The reason why I call this a come-to-Jesus moment for two reasons. One is I do not understand why at least two or three of the folks out there, Billy was the closest one to say that it was an ABCD. That was alerted me to the first, but I saw it. I didn't check it till in the morning. By then, it already rallied $3. And, of course, it rallied a lot more than that. But when I start missing stuff like that, <laughs> there's something really wrong because I, I I watch crude oil like a hawk. Uh, well, like a lot of my watch like a hawk, but crude oil, gold, and the stock indices, I really follow those. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to do something a little bit differently because this is not working if I miss something like this. I mean, two in a row, I mean, a $12,000 move down in crude oil on Tuesday and an $8,000 move up on Thursday. And here I am standing at the bus stop with two quarters in my hand, and there's no pretty girls on the bus. Shut the front door and raise the rent. All right, let's move on here to a couple other things we talked about yesterday. This is the Treasury notes, and this is very important, folks, because what we had happen here is a pretty big reversal from this 382 level. Okay, this we were on the air when that was happening. The bonds were trading at 142.06. This was trading exactly at the ABCD price at 120 and change, right on the money. And both of those have reacted. The Treasury bonds have dropped more than uh, $3,000 off of that point. And we'll get the uh, Treasury bond one up here so you'll be able to see it also. And, uh, you know, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for me uh, talking about some of the stuff that was on my mind today. But, you know, if I sit here and just BS you about A, B, C, D, and Fibonacci, that ain't going to help you. Because if you think I don't go through the emotional stuff that you go through, you're full of baloney. Because, uh, you know, I'm a short-term trader. I focus on what these A, B, C, D patterns do on a shorter-term basis for one reason. And one reason only is it defines the risk of what you have to do. And so once you do that, you're going to be able to do it. The thing is, you've got to be able to shake it off and move on. And I have missed two monster moves you add them up 12 and 8 that's 20 grand that was sitting there on the table just as easy as possible and i didn't take it as a matter of fact i left 260 dollars on the table so anyway it's not it's not the money folks it's the application of the rules that i work with and i am just not getting it done i don't know what it is i'm going to chat with a couple of my very good friends today paula webb and adrian togare and try to get an idea uh, what I could be doing a little bit better, and I'm going to try to get it uh, corrected the best that I can. But uh, these moves that are coming are going to be absolutely – well, they, they, you can see what we've done already. We had a $20,000 move in crude oil in two days. And if you did any type of work on patterns, you should have got some of it. You know, So uh, I didn't. So – that that's a big that's a big no no in my book. So let's uh, yeah I know the gold has been okay and the crude oil has been okay or the stocks have been okay and stuff like that. But I tell you folks I really I'm in a quandary about the, how I want to handle this because uh, to miss that number on the way down on Tuesday in crude oil that was frustrating enough. But to miss that A B C D bottom yesterday are you kidding me? Wow I mean. You can't make this up. Even if you don't like ABCDs, you got to realize that, my guys, sometimes they work, and golly, when they do, wow, pay really good attention to them because what they're doing is they're telling you what the pattern is supposed to be doing, but the real value of those patterns are risk control. That's what you have to, 
you know, uh, you know, keep your eye on the ball. That's the main thing. Okay. Regarding that corn, someone asked the question, why didn't I have an order to go in short at that point? Uh, actually, I, I didn't see that until the number is already made. And it was I, maybe I'm just not looking at them enough, but I, I look at these charts a lot. Not as much the last few days. Maybe that's what the problem was. But uh, anyway, that's what we're paying very, very close attention to. Now, we're hopefully going to have Stan Harley here. If not, we're going to talk about some commodities. Oh, do you know I've got a data problem? Uh, 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and Stan's going to be unable to join us today because of the volatility that we're seeing in these markets, which I can certainly uh, understand. Hopefully tomorrow we're going to have Tim Bost, Financial Circles Weekly on Monday, we are going to have Norm Winsky of Astro Trends. And then on Tuesday, we'll have uh, Jim Bartoleone of Bart's Charts. And uh, that's what we have for the next few days. So we'll be able to you know, get some ideas of what these folks are looking at. Because I know some people here get a little tired of listening to ABCD and stuff like that. But boys and girls, when you see these ABCDs work like they do, sometimes you've got to pay attention to it. That's just not by accident. I mean, gee whiz. I mean, it's just... Uh, the $64 question is you're going to be able to, uh, you know, make any money out of it, of whether you're going to be seeing what's really going to be happening or not. Okay, now, wow, look at the bonds. We're, we broke a 39 handle. Now we're down uh, almost, uh, 
on those four handles now uh, in the Treasury bonds from that high that we made uh, yesterday. So we'll take a look at that. Let's see how the corn is holding up here. Uh, well, it's, it's backed off 20 cents from the 3A2, which is interesting. Uh, the gold is now backed off $8 from the 3A2. Crude oil continues to move higher. Gosh, darn, how could I miss that one? That was uh, That's frustrating to me, folks, because I get so many people showing me these great patterns that you're looking at. Not one person other than Billy uh, sent the ABCD. And, I'm, hey, this is not... This is not an excuse. It's just a reason. You know, there's no excuses for when you have to take responsibility, and I certainly do, but I flat out missed it. You know, a, a third grader could have seen that. I mean, it's a perfect ABCD, dropping in open interest, all of those things uh, on the daily chart, making a perfect ABCD in price and time. And, uh, and these are monster moves, folks. I mean, you know, 12,000 down and 8,000 up, that's 20 grand on just a, on a one lot. Hell, using a mini, that's 10 grand, you know, so that's uh, very interesting. So now I'll tell you what I'm watching today since we've got some time here and there's not much else to do here. Let's get up here and we'll take a quick look here. This this is, uh, I'm going to share with you the, uh, the artificial intelligence program that I use, this neural network that uh, developed many, many years ago. You'll see there is the opening range down in here. Here's the actual opening uh, price right here when we were trading at uh, 38.63, and of course that's when the you know magic buying comes in that first hour of trading. We've gone all the way up. Now what this is what this is forecasting is that in about an hour, uh, this thing should start down for the rest of the day. Now it's really simple how this operates because you should be making a top very near this spot right here. You can see it right there, boys and girls. Now 20 minutes later. It, that's 10 bars. 20 minutes later, if this thing isn't coming down, something's wrong and you better get out of the way because that thing is going to tell you you could flip over and go up for another five or six hours. Or, well, at least four hours today. So anyway, that's why it's really important. It'll be, on, it'll be after I'm off this show, but uh, it comes in, I believe the exact time is uh, about 1.30. Uh, not 1.30. Yeah, about 1.30 uh, New York time. So watch that very, very close. It's about an hour from where we are uh, right now. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, now a uh, question. Oh, my goodness, someone's asked a question here from the uh, Tiger Den, and that is, how often do I check the open interest? I check the open interest each day, but I especially check it when we have a huge volume day or a breakout type day where there's a lot of news about something coming into the market. And with a big drop like that in crude oil, there was a lot of news coming into the market. But as you can see from that chart that I posted, that had already been going on, folks. That had been going on for five or six days, that drop in open interest and drop in prices. It's just that it started to accelerate. And now we complete the ABCD down there at 95, you know, 9517. Uh, you know, you got to say, wow. That really must be something because it turned right on a dime. And if you look at Treasury bonds turning right on the dime and then Treasury bonds turning right on the dime, you got to think there must be something in those dimes. Now, I have some charts here from the uh, German DAX that I wanted to bring up to you today. Hold on a second. We'll get these up here. Uh, I need to take a tiny bit of water. Uh-oh. Okay, the charts are not coming through. Stand, uh, oh, dear. Well, I think it's time. All right, I get. I don't know if the charts are coming through on the DAX. Uh, okay, now the charts are up there for the DAX. This thing has been in the downtrend. You can see we've had some equal moves in here. Uh, until this thing, you know, explodes above these highs up in here, it looks like it's going to be continuing to go lower. All we're seeing now, in my opinion, is a... Uh, you know, a rally in a bear market. That's really what it looks like to me. And the next one we want to look at here is the FTSE. And we do have a new prime minister yet uh, to be to be named soon over in the UK. And that is from Mr. Boris Johnson uh, is out of the picture. Boy, those guys over there. I mean, I thought we were really uh, in the dark ages with our Congress and Senate here. But those guys wrote the book on this stuff. I mean, they, they act like children over there. I mean, I can't believe it when I, I – John Jameson asked me to watch what was going on because I have no interest in, you know, politics in the U.K. But when I watched how these people make noises and hiss and stuff like that, I mean, 
And that's just to me doesn't sound very professional, but I know as much about politics as uh, a lot of other things that I've missed too. So anyway, that's neither here today. We'll have somebody new coming in. Maybe a Mr. Churchill will come back from the dead and get everything corrected, but I highly doubt whether that's going to be the case. I've mentioned several times, and then also in the newsletter, we've talked about it. We've seen tremendous, I mean, tremendous drops, folks, uh, in the futures markets. I mean, not just wheat. You know, wheat has gone from uh, $14 a bushel, you know, down to 8 You know, just a, you know, a big, a huge break. But if you look at other things that, that, we, that we're into all the time, t just take a look at, take a look at here at a cup of Joe, folks. This is chart of coffee. I mean, look how much it's come down here. It's been in a bear market for well over a year. Okay, if we take a look at the next one we're going to look at is since we're watching coffee, we might as well take a look at hot chocolate and cocoa. And you don't have to be a rocket science to look at this one. Look what cocoa's been doing, you know, for a long time, headed lower. Okay, the price of lumber, folks, the price of lumber made $1,700 last year. And believe it or not, I mean, lumber, it's pretty tough, but it gives a rough idea of what, you know, the price of lumber is, even though it's really hard to trade. It's only traded by commercials. But from 1700 all the way down to 350 and then back up to 1100 and now we're back to 600 getting ready to go below 5 I mean, this is, uh, th this is negative stuff, folks. The problem is we have two types of inflation. We have demand push and – uh, demand pull and cost push. Well, the demand is is what, what's in the pro process now because they can't get some of this stuff. See, but the costs on it, the costs are going to be the labor costs that are going to come in. They have any, those are going to be really hard to re retrace or to take away from because people don't like to take cuts in their salaries. So that's why we're watching it. And that's why the Fed's between a rock and a hard place. They really are. They're going to have to really decide what they're going to be able to do here and then they'll be have a pretty good idea of uh, how they're going to handle it. So that's what I'm looking at. We just broke the 106 level at 101.60 in the uh, euro, folks, still heading down, uh, making new lows as we speak. And as we said many times, we're only 150 pips away, folks, from that chart that uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Steve Rhodes gave us and also the one we put up, which is par, 100 versus the dollar versus the euro. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, someone in the den of TFNN asked a question, and that is, how would you have handled the uh, crude oil, given the fact that that wasn't a major bottom down there yesterday at uh, 95.17? Now, believe it or not, folks, I'm doing this in hindsight, and in hindsight, it's really, really easy to see. But when you're in the bits, midst of the battle, you don't, your hindsight is, you're more worried about your hind end than your hindsight. So, this is just the teaching purposes here. You'll notice that the first retracement that we had from the low yesterday stopped right at the 61% retracement to the tick. That was the first sign that it was getting ready to go higher. Then the market makes a new high and then pulls back to the 382. As you can see here with the second trend line, that dark line is there. And then if you'll notice this last part right here, that you see the higher bottoms right in here? This was telling you the market was really starting to pick up steam. Now, this is only an eight-minute chart, but it gives you an idea short-term, you know, where the buying is coming from. And then, of course, once we exploded above that 78% level up here at that 102 and change, excuse me, 100 and change, you know, we immediately rallied again. So we went from 95, we rallied $9,000 today, folks. And when you see this big run-up like we've had here, that we had in the first hour at stocks, same thing happened. You don't want to stand in front of that. So I hope that helps. I know it's in retrospect, but uh, retrospect is a little town in Iowa that you should visit sometime. And I just made that up. Okay, let's move on to one other commodity that I think is relatively important to us. And that is the L Copper, if I can get it up here. Oh, dear. Going to have to find it. Yeah, it's right here. Let's get the old copper up. Oh, oh dear. Now what's happened to it? Silver, copper, all of these look like they're, they're – there's copper right here. Hold on a second, boys and girls. We've been – we've broken down badly in copper. And we'll get this chart up so you folks will be able to see it right here. There's where we are. We have broken down very, very badly, way below the ABCD. And we're continuing to go lower, so uh, I don't believe we're going to have a bottom in copper yet. We still should have a bounce. Now, remember, we've got stocks rallying and copper isn't, and one of them's got to be right. I have to go with the copper myself. This is nothing more than a short covering rally. Like tonight, the one thing that we have to be watching is, is if we're watching this rally that's going on here in stocks, if this is accompanied by a drop in open interest, this whole rally is nothing more than short covering. Okay, and that tells you that, uh oh, we're getting ready to go down again. But you got to wait till the end of the day to see if that is, in fact, going to be right. So, those are the few things that you want to uh, keep in mind as you're looking at some of these things. I'll just take a quick look here since we've got a couple minutes here free. And I just want to see how close we are following the, uh, the, uh, the stock market. And uh, that should come in just a little bit after the show at around 12.15, folks. Oh, it's following up pretty nicely right around 12.15. The best price would be 39.02 or 39.06. That's what I'd be watching at 12.02. If you're making that number, and if you're making that number, then that's a very, very 
low risk shorting opportunity in my opinion because you have time and price lined up together when you have a beautiful 78% level in the E-mini S&P and you have the timing that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, but you have to assume that it's worked because it started working early this morning and uh, that gives you a very low risk entry point. And sometimes when they turn, they turn for uh, quite a while. So watch 12.15, that's going to be the key time, which is in just about 25 minutes. That's what you want to be uh, looking at uh, here right now. Another question that someone asked me, have I given up on astrology? No, boys and girls, I have never given up on astrology. Astrology's given up on me, and I'll tell you why. I just don't have the energy to do what's necessary to follow it astrologically. What I do is really simple. I do A, B, C, D, Fibonacci. That's what I look at. When I have those lined up, it tells me what my risk is. And that's what's going on. And Byron's calling again. It must be a mother. Must be another uh, emergency. But I'm not going to answer that one. And we'll, we'll worry about that just uh, uh, a little bit later here. So if you have any questions today, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. And uh, we'll see what's going on. It looks like I'm going to have to answer the darn thing pretty soon. Well, he's hanging up now. So hopefully. They won't, uh, well, I'll call him back at the break, I guess. Okay, I'm going to have to turn it off from now on. Sorry, folks, I should have turned the machine off before we were going on here uh, taking a look at this. So that's pretty much it. Okay, now here is, uh, I want to, I'm trying to do some time filling some information is what I'm trying to do right now. So let's take a look here because it's very interesting that we have, oh, brother, hold on. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I gotta love it. <laughs> Only in America. Okay, I'm gonna do another AI, so fill the fill the okay. Here's a perfect example. You see here, this has been the forecast. Same thing here, 1215. Both crude oil and the S P are showing possible turns at 1215. If we start going down after 1215, it means something. But at 1230 and you're still up at there at the highs. This thing's not working anymore. It's worked perfectly the first 55% of the day, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work perfectly the rest of the day because once it stops working, it's flipped. It's inverted. So that's uh, why you have to pay you know, really, really close attention to it. Okay, uh, another question someone's asked, and that is uh, the information in the Gartley book. The Gartley book to me, folks, is the holy grail of technical analysis. From pages 200 to 250, he explains A, B, C, D, and basically explains what fractals are that Mr. Mandel brought, taught us in 1976. Uh, Gartley was doing it in 1937. It was the seed pattern, which is nothing more than the thunderbolt or the A, B, C, D pattern. It's everywhere on every chart. If you don't believe it, just go back and look at tick charts. That's all you'll see is A, B, C, Ds everywhere. And they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, whether it's a daily, weekly, monthly. The ABCDs are there. You don't always find them because sometimes you miss them like you missed them in crude oil. And unfortunately, that's the way it is. And we'll move on to the next one and not worry too much about it. But around 1215, pay very, very close attention to that S&P because it is lining up just about as nice as you possibly can be and for a potential sale up in there. So we want to watch that. I am really dehydrating badly here, folks. Hold on one second. And the other thing is, when we get up there at these levels, like in crude oil, we went from 95, we're up nine grand from the low that we made yesterday. Does that mean it's going to drop nine grand today? No, could it? Yes, possibly, but don't expect that. Just see if it's going to be uh, going on. Uh, a little bit differently. Hold on one second here. I got a, uh, yeah, that's right. There's a small three drive pattern coming up here uh, in the E-mini S&P that's going to be really interesting to watch too. I think we can, uh, I think we can share this with the folks. Hold on one second. We'll get up here to give us a quick uh, look, see, easy enough to see. This is what this is what I like to see when people whether they work or not it doesn't make a whole lot of difference but you can see there it is right up there that 3906 anyway 0206 uh, we'll be right back boys and girls 877-927-6648 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, we're going to take a look here at natural gas. This is a daily chart. Oh, boy, this is not good. Uh, boys and girls, I am afraid my, my voice is going. I, this might be it for me, boys and girls. I'm not sure yet. I'll make a decision tonight, but uh, this is not good from my health standpoint, and my health is more important than anything else here. You can see the ABCD here on the natural gas. Uh, we've hit the bottom. We've backed off a little bit. We're rallying today. So that completes that A, B, C, D. It's uh, pretty much uh, spot on. So that's it. Uh, I uh, I will find out tonight uh, and whether I'm going to be on the show tomorrow. I'll let Tim Boss know. But uh, my voice is gone. Again, I can, I can, I can feel it already. And uh, I am not happy. And... Uh, I'm not in any pain, but I've got to watch these vocal cords because uh, uh, not good. All right, that's about it. I'm going to finish the show. I know you got some dead time here, uh, Al, but uh, I haven't got anything else to say. But that's pretty much it. I'll. Uh, I'm not. I. I don't know what it's going to be long term, but I got to get this thing straight, folks, because I can't just do two shows and then my vo my voice goes bad again. That ain't, that ain't gonna happen because I got I have responsibility to the 24/7 people, but more important than that, I have responsibility to myself and my family, and I got to take good care of myself because I'm at the eighth furlong pole. In fact, I'm getting ready to going past way past the eighth furlong pole pretty soon. So uh, we'll do that. Anyway, I'm, I'm feeling good. I just sound terrible. My throat hurts a bit, but I'm not not in any COVID or anything like that. It's just that my vocal cords are. 
the, the twanging. That shouldn't happen. We'll see you tomorrow, maybe. If not, don't worry about me. Don't send me emails saying you're concerned about me because then I have to answer them all, and I don't have the energy to answer them. So sorry, boys and girls, but uh, that's the way it looks right now, and we'll see you whenever I see you, and may God bless. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. God bless.